Greetings, my dear brethren. It is indeed a joy, and I count it a privilege to be able to come to you and to share with you in these devotions. It is my prayer that your hearts have been encouraged. It is my prayer that many who no doubt have listened to these devotions have realized that they need the Savior and have invited him to come into their heart to save them, forgive them of their sins. And now they are children of God. It is my prayer that you have been sharing these devotions with your friends, your neighbors, your loved ones, those that are near and those that are far. And today I am coming to you to share with you in this devotion, yet another day, the theme that I've given it, looking for the glorious city. You know, sometimes when we are booked to travel, we count down the weeks, then we count down the days, we count down the hours, and we count down the minutes when we would get on that plane and go to that place that we have booked our passage to go. Well, one of these days, I cannot tell you exactly when, but we are going to that glorious city that the songwriter by the name of James wrote, and he said from Revelation 21, 23, and the city had no need of the sun, for the glory of God did lighten it. He wrote the song entitled, Just Over in the Glory Land. He said, the second stanza, I am on my way to those mansions fair. You would ask him where. He would say, just over in the glory land. What you will do there, John? He said, there to sing God praise and his glory share just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land, I'll join the happy angel band. Just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land, there with the mighty host I'll stand. Just over in the glory land. It is amazing that it was James that wrote that number. And it is John who is saying to us from the word of God what was said to him. We talked about going to the glory land. And that is for those of us who know the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I said in our last devotion that all that I would try to do to explain to you what it looks like, still I would have failed when I am true because I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither had entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for him. But John, he wrote for us what he saw. And in Revelation chapter 21, reading from verse 9 to verse number 23, yes, it's going to be a lengthy reading. But you know what? I believe the word is true that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So he writes and he said, And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talk with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride and the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and a high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and Names were written thereon, 
which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations. And in them, the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the walls thereof. And the city lieth square and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the walls thereof a hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of man that is of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city was garnished with all manner of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth Beryl, the night, topaz, the tenth, chrysoprosus, the eleventh, jacinth, and the twelfth, amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve poles, every several gate of one pole. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need for the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Wow! What a powerful reading. What a sight to behold when we get there. What I've noticed in this text, there are some things I would like to bring to your attention. Number one, the invitation from the angel. If we go back to verse nine, we would find, and there came unto me, the me there is John. One of the seven angels there were seven angels, and one came to John, which had the seven vials full of seven last plagues. And notice what happened when the angel came to John. And John and the angel talk. The angel talk with me. Angel talked to John, saying, What is it that the angel said to John? He said, Come hither. Hmm. To me, that's an invitation. Now, why the angel was calling him to come hither? He said, I'll show thee the bride and the lamb's wife. This is the third time we are hearing the words, come hither. For in Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1, the scripture said, After this I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be thereafter. Again, we look in Revelation chapter 17 and verse number one, and we see, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talk with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore 
that sitteth upon many waters. Wow. John had the privilege of hearing the angel say, come, come up. John, yes, was on planet Earth, but in a vision, he was given the opportunity to come up to the place where he would be able to see all of this. But you know what? John, after the vision was given to him, he had to come back down. He just got a glimpse of it. But one of these days, we will get to see it also. And we will be a part of it. And in these devotions, I'll explain to you what John saw and what I am looking forward to see myself. Our Father, so grateful I am to you for your word. Lord, so grateful I am to you for all that you have done and all that you're doing for us. I pray that you would give us a glimpse and we would look, Lord, at what you have done and what you're doing and that it will bring about the changes in our lives that you desire and that we would represent you as sons of the King. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. We glorify you. Thanks for what you have done and what you're doing for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Friend, if you do not know Jesus, I invite you to trust him before it's too late. Believer, if you are out of the will of the Lord, I invite you to come on back because pretty soon now we are going to be with the Lord. Do have a great day. Would you please partner with me and share this devotion? Someone who may have never heard about Jesus will get to hear about him and who knows may come to trust him before it's too late. May God bless you, your family, and all that you have to do today in Jesus' name. Have a great day.